The guy just had the worst day of his life in a trial. I don't think he's going to come out today and say, uh, the day after he gets run over by a truck, hey, how about those cowboys? No, it's not going to be like that. So today was all about uh, talking about the trial, the verdict, something that I think many of us were still in shock uh, that it ever happened and maybe not as shocked as that he was convicted in New York, given the way the judge ran the trial and uh, really put his thumb on the scale, if not just sat down on the scale. But I, I think if you listen to Donald Trump's speeches, the one in the South Bronx just a week or so ago was a brilliant recitation of what he wants to do for this country. So, you know, cut him some slack for today. Okay. But listen Fair to enough. his campaign speeches. He goes through those issues pretty carefully. And uh, I thought that's why he had such a great crowd, and they responded brilliantly to him. Uh, fair enough. And I guess we wait now for the next rally. I don't know about you. I was surprised there wasn't one suddenly planned um, for this weekend. But his supporters have responded $35 million, which is an unbelievable amount of money to raise in 24 hours. I think the number has actually gotten more than that since the conviction. 30% were new donors. Honest Democrats I talk to are terrified um, that they have perhaps uh, uh, awakened a beast, if you will, uh, or, or yeah. poked the lion of, of independent <laughs> voters who just don't who just don't like this. Um, what if Kathy Hochul pardoned Donald Trump tomorrow? Wouldn't that take away the "this is rigged, I'm the victim" uh, argument? It would certainly, I think, show some grace on Kathy Hochul's part. I don't think she'll ever do it. But it still doesn't erase the fact that this should never have been brought to trial. This was an absurdity. And I think the more people saw through this, the jurors were kept from a lot of the information that many of us could follow. They didn't get it. So I'll cut them some slack. But the American people saw through this. And that's why you saw this fundraising bonanza for the Trump campaign. Leland, I had people contact me through text, emails, and phone calls all yesterday. And, and these were people who basically were never Trumpers. And many yep. of them said, look, I didn't like the guy, never voted for him, but I just sent him a contribution and all in and just wanted you to know. And some of them really surprised me. And I've seen that over and over today. And a lot of it is because people realize that when when the game gets uh, played unfairly, when you have uh, a sitting president who unleashes all the levers of government that he can influence against his opponent, then something just doesn't smell right to the American people. They like to just make that decision themselves you, when they go to vote. Yeah, nothing speaks louder, I, I guess you could say, than voting. But really nothing speaks louder than pe people putting their money where their mouth is. And if you've gotten 50 texts, I always figure for, you know, for every one person who texts or emails or calls, there's really 50 people like them out there. So that speaks volumes. Next comes the issue. And look, um, a lot of people didn't think he was going to get convicted. Now a lot of experts say there's no way that Donald Trump is going to jail, and yet Within minutes of the conviction, there was a lot of people hoping for just that. Take a listen. I think Alvin Bragg is going to ask for a sentence of incarceration, and I think Judge Mershon will very seriously weigh that. For anyone else, this would mean jail. It is so hard when you are thinking about who, if they commit this kind of crime, should go to jail. The excitement on MSNBC continues. Um, but if you think about what happened to Trump and the groundswell of support that has happened by his conviction, uh, if he gets sentenced to jail, there's going to be Republicans, big name Republicans, pitching tents outside Rikers uh, to hold some kind of vigil. At that point, wouldn't it almost be political malpractice for Kathy Hochul not, not to pardon him? Well, I think it'd be absurd to even attempt to put a former president in jail uh, for what they alleged was a bookkeeping crime. Alvin Bragg doesn't put people in jail who hit elderly ladies in the back of the head with a brick uh, in broad daylight. He doesn't put people in jail who are illegal immigrants who attack a cop with video cameras rolling. So if he honest to God thought that he could put a former president over this ridiculous bookkeeping issue that I don't think even is an existent crime, if he really tried to do that, 
Um, would the last person out of New York please turn off the lights? Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.